Damn, well, here we are. It's been so long since I've done this. I forgot, like, if I even know how to speak English anymore. I like, think I'm speaking them right. But, uh, I've had some things going on, like I mentioned in the last videos. Um, doesn't matter what they are. I hate to be that guy say I'm too busy because, like, you're never too busy for priorities. So I just straight up being lazy. That's my reason for not posting. You know, besides the busy stuff, you get done what you want to get done. Still have time for powerlifting, still have time for school and eating and making money. So there shouldn't be an excuse to make videos like they don't even take that long. So we're back into these videos. That's what I'm saying. No more excuses. Because that's what I was doing. Lately, I've been doing high bar. That's just boring as hell. Because <laughs> I want to do some low bar. Uh, I know the reason for posture. You know, to help fix posture for low bar. Help core stability. I know the reason. I, um, I get it. But there's no top sets. And it's just high bar. And it just sucks. Because, you know... I'm not, I'm more hip dominant. I say I feel it in my quads, but I don't even feel it in my quads that much because I'm that hip dominant. So it's supposed to be high bar today, Monday. It's already Tuesday because it's late. It's about to be one. But I drink pre-workout late. So like pre-workout late, I wouldn't be sleeping right now anyway. So I might as well make this video. That's what I'm saying. Like I always sleep late. That's the time I can be making videos. There's always time to do what you want to do. So what I was saying is high bar should be Monday, which I did Monday night. And then I did bench, which should be tomorrow. But, you know, due to time constraints throughout the day, um, I just do, like I've always done before I started um, with my coach, um, just like compound lifts, like SBD stuff. SBD or just SB or whatever, like BD. Um, I do that and no accessories or maybe some accessories and I just spread the accessories out throughout the week, like three a day. So it was a uh, high bar pause, 315, four by five. And I really pause them and I really hit depth. I know that. The pauses don't look the best, but I think they look better than most people's pauses by a little bit. But the depth is there. That's why it looks hard. And it is hard because of that. And my fifth one, you know, my back was running. I'm being 100% honest. But I got better. I got stronger at all these high bar stuff um, throughout these past weeks because I was like at two. I don't even remember. It was like, yeah, it was like 300 ish. Like 305, 315, and I'm still at 315, but it's easier now before I couldn't do the amount of reps. So it would be like a 4x5, do a 5x4, you know, or I'd only get like a 4x4 four four instead of a 4x5. So getting better at high bar, which I never truly mastered, because once I got good, I was getting good at it. I switched to low bar, and I was amazing at that compared to the high bar. And then we did the working sets, 275 high bar, 4x5, and then bench, 245, 3x2, which was horrible. The, the third set was okay, but every second set... Uh, second rep of every set was just super slow. Um, I suck at bench. <laughs> and then uh, just some spottle. The, the spottle Larson at the end at the same time. So legs up, not all the way down. Hold it. And that was it. Um, I've been progressing on those. So here's the video. So here's my high bar stuff that's kind of boring, kind of torture. Um, I'm learning to love it, to be honest. But I haven't gone this, this long without low bar. Um, since I've done low bar, I'm usually always doing low bar with high bar, low bar with front squats or all three, which is pretty crazy. But, you know, I switch it up. It's not always like that. Right now it's just high bar pause and then working sets right after like, uh, pause working sets and then no pause working sets. Um, yeah, I, I see this really working for translating to low bar. My coach is like, you know, He's convinced, of course, he'd done it before. I've never done it, but he's convinced that it's going to like low bar is going to be easy when we go back. I think the heaviest I had gone low bar was like 355, I'm pretty sure. Or three, not Yeah, 355. That's pretty heavy. So 355, like, I don't, I know it wasn't 365. So 355 for like a three by five. I'm not, I, honestly, I forgot, but it was something along those lines. So I was telling him today, like, I wonder how, like, I'm going to forget how to do low bar. He's like, no, it's like riding a bike. You're not going to forget, obviously. And it was a joke. And I was saying, I wonder how 400 would feel like doing low bar. And he was saying it'll feel better when you come back. He wasn't answering 400 just in general. It'll feel better, especially after doing high bar. <laughs> this is a really messed up set. I think I just did first and last set for, yeah, I just first and last set um, for the pause and for these. But these are really messed up sets. It's 275, 4 by 5 but, like, honestly, my hips are pretty dead. Like, I'm that hip dominant that I feel it in my hips doing low bar. High bar, high bar, not low bar. I know there's going to be some people like, oh, you should feel it in your quads. You're doing it wrong. I'm doing it right. 
first of all but honestly that that hip dominant like when i do the pauses i don't really feel it in my anywhere like hips a little bit but on the working sets and no pause i feel it in my hips like a lot of it and it hurts just to uh, hit depth um it doesn't hurt it's just a little tax it doesn't hurt um so you know i'm pretty tired doing these even though it's like i was doing 255 four by five for two weeks it was at 275 for a while and then he it was low um it was a uh, light sorry and then it was like we're back to 275 and it's kind of heavy so this is the 245 3x2 and that this is the slowest second rep or any rep of all time the bar went down a little bit and i'm not joking that's like me trying right there and it looks like i'm not um i think the leg drive is on point because if my leg drive wasn't that would have fell straight on my chest um if it happened already with 245 to be exact three by two last month and it fell on me on my sec that on this rep so that one and then the next set next rep the second round but it didn't happen today um so we did improve but i mean it's pretty damn slow bar went down again these would not count in the meat my ass came up a little it wasn't that obvious but it did come up i think that would be like the 50 rule 50 50 rule if your ass is 50 percent on the bench it would count but that's ipf but i don't know that depends on the refs. This is the last set. It was the best one. I wanted to show all sets because there's only six reps. That one was pretty clean. I wanted to pause a little longer, and I did. It might not look long, but that was the best second rep of the set. And I noticed on the second set, I like exhaled too fast. And on the third one, I held my breath until I was completely done with the rep, which can work um, depending on the person. I usually don't, but with bench, I really have to stay tight. And all of them, obviously. Some people hold their breath the entire set until they're done. The choice is yours. So I had a friend at school. He's, like, interested in powerlifting. I'm a kinesiology major, and we're all real cool. Like, we all get along for the most part, except for one guy. It's just one guy I don't really like. But I don't really talk to him, so it doesn't matter. But this guy, <laughs> I do like this guy. He was asking, I, t I was telling him on Friday, like, oh, like, we didn't swim too much because I have teaching aquatics on Friday, and we swim. And I was like, we didn't swim so much today. It's uh, not going to be so hard because I do front squats Friday. So powerlifting usually gets to me because my left hip hurts after we swim like 20 laps in the pool. And that's the last thing we do in the pool. It's not the first or middle. It's the last thing. And it's crazy because I don't really swim. It's just Fridays. And it's pretty hard. <laughs> like she goes a little hard on us. Um, but I always swim my left hip for front squats. So front squats don't really go according to plan. And I used to do front squats right after teaching aquatics. But now I do them later on in the day. And it felt good. And I was like, it's kind of hard with powerlifting. Thank God we didn't swim so much today. It wasn't so crazy. It was fun. And it was uh, like modified. And he was like, I have a question for, uh, for powerlifting. Because he works out. He's a beginner. And he said, um, he said, like, I feel it right here on when I bench. It kind of hurts. Um, does that mean I'm doing it wrong? Should I not feel it in my shoulders? Or he was talking about more of his, you know, it was more of his pec, pec minor. And either way, it's an insertion to the shoulder, no matter what. So it's kind of the shoulder, kind of. Um, whether it's the pec minor or whatever part of the pec or the shoulder. And he was saying, like, am I doing something wrong? And I was going to answer, but someone else who works out for sure, but he's, mm, I don't know, his, I don't know how long he's been doing it. He said this uh what well, depends are you doing wide grip or close grip that's what everyone asks the ones who think they know but they don't know it's like you're doing wide grip or close grip and i already knew what i was gonna hear once he opened his mouth like i just knew i've heard this a million times and he's like i'm wider grip so then my friend who asked me the question he's like 5 11 long arms and he's tall like 5 11 he's like a lanky figure i'm not saying 5 11 is tall but lanky and long arms and he's like okay well that's why because you do more of a wide grip but his logic was flawed. He said you do light wide grip, so that's more chest wide grip. So you should do a closer grip, and you won't feel it as much in your chest. Because everyone says wider grip, more chest, which is so wrong. That is 100% wrong. The guy who said that I respect him so much, I love him, he's a cool guy, but that is not true. But his logic was flawed. He said wide grip, more chest, shoulder width, less chest. And I was like, okay, no, first of all. And second of all, that should mean he shouldn't feel it there. Technically, I don't know. I think he told him to white, uh, bring his grip in closer, which I do agree with. What do I agree with? He said it kind of confused me. More, more chest. Yeah, he said more. You go wider. That's why more chest. But he kind of felt it in his shoulder. He said like right here. I consider that shoulder because it's insertion to the shoulder. It's very close. He doesn't feel it like here. He doesn't feel it here. He doesn't feel it. You know what I mean? To me, I'm gonna go with shoulder. So anyway, all the wide grip really does is lay, uh, shorten the range of motion. Some people say like power lifters have a huge art and like uh, super wide grip, like it's a small range of motion. I mean, yeah, that's all they're really doing. It's a shorter range of motion and the arch just depends on the person. Not everyone has a Sean Orega arch. 
but more chess is actually shoulder width. A lot of people will argue it no matter how experienced they are, but more chess is shoulder width. Because if you go a wide grip, let's just say you go ring, index on the ring, you're shortening the range of motion, cool for power lifting. But just in general, if you're going right here to bench, look at your chest. It's not really contracting much. Like, look at that. Compared to this, when you do dumbbell bench, you bring them together, right? We touch them or we bring them close. And we could feel and see the contraction with anyone, no matter how what their fitness level is. But if you bench dumbbells like this, it's not going to happen. It's mainly going to be right here. That's why he felt that in his shoulder, chest, whatever. Um, so I don't know, I just wanted to bring that up. Chest, um, power lifters, not saying everyone does it like me, shoulder width. But I think shoulder width is the most ideal. Elbow tuck, not like the biggest elbow flare in the world like everyone does. Like some do, not everyone. Just look at the great bench pressers like Julius Maddox. I think Russell Ori, he may not be the best, but he's a good bench presser in my opinion. He has the form I'm talking about. He has like no arch at all. Neither does Julius Maddox. Julius Maddox, is, which is what I'm talking about. Like not everyone has one like Sean Vorega. So when people say power lifters cheat like that, it's like that's not true. Most of them don't arch like that. It's a select few. So yeah, other than range of motion, it's not everything. Like that's not more chest. I can't stand when people say that. <laughs> like when you're doing push-ups out here, you're not going to feel You're going to feel that in your back. It's going to be like a rear delt fly. I've done it before. You'll feel it in your chest. But how are you going to squeeze like that? You just can't squeeze. It's just not happening. No one can convince me. Like, when you're doing flies, cable, bam, look at that. You're going right here. You're not going like that. Dumbbell flies, the same thing. So I wanted to throw it out. That's honestly the video. I wanted to end it there. That was just something my friend said. He was asking. I gave him an answer. Other friend gave a weird logic answer, but I don't blame him why he gave that answer. Um, just wanted to throw that in. I've said it before, probably. But that's it for the video. Thanks for watching. Um... I'm gonna, for sure, I'm going to do it. I said I'm going to upload another video this week. I'm saying it, and I'm going to do it. Because I usually don't say what I'm going to do. But that is a promise. See you next time.